Hello and welcome to the spoken tutorial on Django Shell and Django Database Query. In this tutorial, we will learn to use the Django Shell and create a Django Query. To practice this tutorial, I am using Ubuntu Linux 16.04 operating system, Python 3.5, Python 3.4 VENV or IA Gedit text editor. However, you can use any other text editor of your choice. To follow this tutorial, you need to know how to create models in Django. If not, then please go through the prerequisite tutorials in this series. The Django shell is a Python shell configured for our Django project. We can execute our project code in this shell. We can manipulate our app models in this shell. Let us open the terminal by pressing Ctrl, Alt and T keys simultaneously on your keyboard. Now using cd command we will go to the folder my iPhone Django which we had created earlier. Activate the virtual environment my app underscore env. Now let us go to the folder my site. Here onwards, please remember to press the enter key after typing each command. Let us now type the command python manage.py space shell. We are now in the interactive console. The interactive console provides a perfect complement to the Python environment. It allows interactive editing, running and debugging of our Python project. Switch back to the terminal. Let us run a Django query to add a new blog. Type the commands one by one as shown here. To add a new block, we need to import block from our models. Here we have created a block instance. Also we have added values to its fields name and creation date. Created underscore on attribute is not needed while creating a new object. This is because we have already defined a default value for created underscore on attribute in models. For learning purpose, we have shown how to assign a value to created underscore on attribute. To get the creation date, we import time zone from django.utils module then save the object that we have created. So Django writes this information to the database table blog. Let us now access the model field values through python attributes. To do so type blog.id. Here the output shows Two. It is the ID of the blog object that we have created now. To display the name of the blog object, type blog.name. Our blog object name, my second blog, is being displayed. To see the date time values of our blog object, type blog.created underscore on. Here it shows the date and time when the blog was created. Let us now change the name of our blog object. To do so type blog.name equal to within single quotes the new name for the blog. I have typed this is a blog from shell. This will change the name in the output as this is a blog from shell. Save the blog. Then 
recall the block dot name command and execute it. We can see the name as this is a block from shell. So far, we have created and made changes on a blog object via shell. To get all blog objects using query type blog dot objects dot all opening and closing parentheses. In the output, we can see the query set with a list of blog objects. Blog object in the output is not a good representation for the object. Let us fix this in the models.py file. Quit from the shell by pressing Ctrl and D keys together. Then open the models.py file in any text editor. We are now in the models.py file. Add a string method below the class blog and article as shown here. For ease of practice, this code is provided in the code files link of this tutorial. Please download, unzip and use it. We define a string method inside the class to get string representation of the object. Here, the string method returns the name of our blog model. Similarly, for the article model, let's return the title. We have added the string method. So, now when we retrieve a blog object, we will see its name. Let's understand this better. Save the file, then switch to the terminal and activate the shell. Import the blog models and run the Django query as we did before. It returns all the instances of the blog model along with its name. Now let's add a custom method to the blog model in models.py file. Quit from the shell. Switch to the models.py file. Now modify the class blog as shown here. Also import the time zone module from django.utils. Timezone.now returns a date time that represents the current time. Time delta expresses the duration difference between two dates two time inputs or two date time stamps. To store time zone information, we import package time zone from django.utils module. The method was created recently checks whether the block is created more recent than a day. This is done by subtracting one day from the current time. Then comparing if the saved time is greater than that. So we have added the method to blog. Save the file. Switch to the terminal and activate the shell. Import the blog models. The variable blog has been lost as we quit from the shell to modify our model. Let us retrieve a blog object by using get method as shown here. Now to check whether the blog has been created recently, type blog dot was underscore created underscore recently, opening and closing parenthesis. Here the result says true. This is because blog was created recently in the shell few minutes back. Run the command again for variable blog1. Here the result says false as first blog was not recently created. Note the above results may vary as per your creation dates. Let us do filtering with Django queries. Type the command as shown. 
Here the query set is evaluated. Then we fetch the result of a blog object for which the ID is 2. Since the ID is unique, we get only one result. Let us access the object by typing blog 2. The output returns the new query set containing the object that matches the given parameter. Here, query set gives the respective blog instance for the ID 2. To get the ID, type the command as shown. The output shows the ID for the given blog object. Now, type block 2 within square brackets 0. In the output, we get the blog object. If we want a single blog object and it exists, in this case, we should use get query. To do so, type the command as shown. Let us access the object by typing block 2. It will return the blog object referred by its ID. Let us now try to get the blog objects based on the year of creation. First, import the time zone from django.utils. Then, type the code as shown here, one by one. Double underscores are used for field lookups. It returns a new query set containing the objects that match the given lookup parameters. This query will return all the blog instances created in this year. Now let us understand the query set return method. To do so, type the code as shown. To count the blog objects, type Blog dot count open and close parenthesis. The output gives the count of blog objects. To know the available method for the query set, type blog dot press the tab key to see the number of available methods. Here we can see a list of methods to return the query set. Note these methods can be directly used with objects as follows blog dot objects dot and method for example to get a blog object use the get lookup parameter type the command as shown here to get the related objects to the blog that is articles we use blog dot article underscore set dot all Every article is related to a blog because of the foreign key relationship. Also, we can access the information of the blog object through its related article object. To do so, type the following command one by one as shown here. We get one as the output. This is our blog object's ID. Now, Using delete method, the object gets deleted. Type block2.delete opening and closing parenthesis. In the output, it returns the number of objects deleted and a dictionary with the number of deletions per object type. Then we use get with id2 by typing block.objects.get within parenthesis id equal to 2. The output throws exception as blog does not exist. This indicates that the blog object we had created has been deleted. Get query will always return a single object. If there are more than one match or no match, then it will throw an error. In that case, it is advisable to use filter. Let us do filtering with id2 by typing blog.objects.filter within parenthesis id equal to 2. The result is a null query set. So 
we have learned to create a Django database query using Django shell. Exit from the shell. Deactivate the virtual environment. With this, we come to the end of this tutorial. Let us summarize. In this tutorial, we have learned to use the Django shell and create a Django query. As an assignment, create and access an article object within blog model using Django query in shell. The video at the following link summarizes the spoken tutorial project. Please download and watch it. The spoken tutorial project team conducts workshops and gives certificates. For more details, please write to us. Please post your timed queries in this forum. Please post your general or technical questions in this forum. Spoken Tutorial Project is funded by MHRD, Government of India. The script has been contributed by Tyagarajar College of Engineering and the FOSI Project, IIT Bombay. The video has been recorded by Praveen from Spoken Tutorial Project, IIT Bombay. Thanks for watching.